Hello, I'm the CNC repairman, and there's a bit of confusion out there about age of machines, software versions, will this board I'm looking at on eBay fit in my machine? And so I wanna do an overview and try to help people understand so that when they make a purchase, when their machine isn't working, what correct board they're looking at. I'm gonna be going over amplifiers, IO boards, power supplies, vector drives, spindle drives, and the processor stack. It's gonna be pretty quick. I don't wanna make the video too long, but I'm not gonna gab and gab and gab. History of electronics video. I shouldn't do this, but I am. VF1s are made 1990-ish. Very quickly, they revise, 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 update software, make the machine way better. So way back in the day, we're talking, we have a Motif board, we have a video board, and an old processor with like a Motorola 68K or older. Then we go, say, 1995. We're still running a Motif board, but we have an updated video board, and we also have an updated processor. The processor may have half a meg or a mega memory, and may be able to process the lines of code a little faster. By that point, say 1995, we're running version six software, maybe version five, that's about field loadable. From there, we're gonna go 1997, 1998-ish, we're gonna go to AC motors, but still with a spindle drive. So then we bring in the Mocon board. At that point, they're looking ahead and going, okay, we need to make a newer video card, but we're still running CRT. So then we're gonna bump, say, to a newer processor that has a little bit more memory, a faster processor as well, and an updated Mocon board. The Mocon board is the board that controls the motors and everything to do with the I.O. board. These boards are normally reverse compatible to a point, but not always forward compatible. So if you get a newer board, it may work on an older machine, but if you try to take an older board and plug it into a newer stack, it's hard to say if it's gonna work. So now let's say we're year 2000, we're running a newer stack, we're still running CRT, but we bump up to LCD. Now this is a small LCD screen. So right around version 13 software. That's when say the super speed machines came out and we went to a coprocessor. So that's a board running two Motorola 68,000 processors. That bumps your look ahead, I think from like 20 lines to 40 lines and brings in your high speed machining. So at this point, we're still running a three board stack. We say have 16 megabytes of memory and we're running a small LCD screen. The LCD screen to the CRT boards, you cannot go between those two. So then we're gonna jump up again and say, hey, you're 2000-ish, you're 2004, we need to be competitive, let's get Ethernet, USB, and a hard drive option. So that's when the PC-104 board came out. And that worked to replace the LCD board and gave those options in. And it, say, worked with version 13, 14, and up from there. If we continue on, we have the Cold Fire 1, Cold Fire 1, now this board has more memory, higher processing speeds, and if you want the USB option or the network or the hard drive, you're gonna need a PC-104 card. Now this all fits in timeline so that you can hopefully understand what you're buying when you buy a machine and how to repair it. So then let's jump Cold Fire 2. Cold Fire 2 and Cold Fire 1 both have the video board on the board, so now we're down to a two board stack, the processor and the Mocon, or an updated Mocon. Now, if you needed the USB, the networking, and the hard drive option, Cold Fires required this PC-104 card, which took over as the video card. Now, glorious main con. That came on the scene, and now we could oust the MoCon, oust the PC-104 card, and everything was on one board, everything was faster. The hard drive, the network, the USB, everything ran. Far easier to troubleshoot and to get at. If you have questions about replacing the battery, check out my how to replace a battery video. And I'll explain it on the boards that have two batteries, on the boards that have no battery plug, cold fire ones, and on the boards like main cons, cold fire twos, and all the way back to the oldest boards. So that's kind of an overview of the electronics. So be careful if you're out there looking to purchase a board online. It may not work with your machine, and when you look at a machine, you can have an idea of what generation it is by the LCD screen, the CRT screen, what age it is, and you'll have an idea of what's it capable of, how fast can it machine, and what are the upgrades that I can put on it. So let's take a look now at amplifiers. The overview here is from the oldest machine up to the current machine. There hasn't been a ton of change, but a little bit. To begin with, old, old machines, we're talking like pre-1996, are gonna have this amplifier for their servo motors. This is a DC amplifier. 
For newer machines that have AC motors, they're gonna probably have a gold amplifier. Now this gold amplifier can be replaced with the current new smart amplifier. They're backwards compatible. The only difference is the little plug. They didn't have a built-in power supply. So the power supply supplied voltage daisy chained across between the amplifiers. So when we're looking, we have a 30 amplifier, we have a 45 amp amplifier. Those both take the little voltage plug. Then we kind of get newer, they change the colors, but they still had the plug. This would be a 60 amplifier, this would be a 60 smart amplifier. These are gonna be the new 45 or 30. The only difference is they don't need that plug. Let's move over to power supplies. This is the low volt power supply that runs the computer or the machine. The screen, the keyboard, the beeps, things like that. It's identical to a computer power supply. The trade name is an AT power supply. They also put a little external power supply on that feeds the little daisy chained voltage to the amplifiers. Since newer machines don't have this daisy chained voltage, they went to an industrial power supply that actually combines the two into one. Power supplies take a beating. They're the first thing that comes in if the voltage spikes or if there's something downline, it'll take these out. These fail quite often, so it's pretty normal to see an upgraded power supply or to see an upgraded power supply fail and have to replace it. The last part of electronics that I wanna go over is the spindle drive. To begin with, they went with just an off-the-shelf spindle drive. After that, they made an in-house drive. They made one for 15, 20 horsepower and one for 40 horsepower. The main difference in why a machine would have a 20 versus a 40 is how fast the acceleration is and how much you have moving. So a large lathe with a big chuck is gonna need a 40 horsepower, more current at startup. But a small little VF2, a 20 horsepower will be just fine. After that, they went to a new generation smart spindle drive. This drive is much faster startup and is able to report the alarms back to the control. As far as I.O. boards go, the main difference is there are two different I.O. boards. An older generation I.O. board that is easily identified by the plugs on this side with the pins sticking out. The newer I.O. boards have the pins on the inside of the plugs. I think it was a safety thing. But if you're looking at an I.O. board, remember the inputs are always on one side with the small plugs and the outputs are on the other. If you need anything, advice, circuit boards, spindle drives, anything like that, please contact CNC Replacement Parts and check out their website. Most of these parts are available for purchase on there. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you learned something.